My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Tech Path. Today we're talking about a product that is an EV called the Mini Vision Urbanaut. Now this is a, let me kind of get around this. This is kind of uh, almost minivan-esque uh, VW Microbus, part Jetsons, and then you spin a little bit of a Tesla into it and package that all up together, you've got the, the Urbanaut. And basically what's happening here is this vehicle was pretty much just a 3D rendering back last fall in 2020. And now basically what you've got is the BMW group, which is now set to unfeel, unveil the physical model of this vehicle, which is gonna basically allow audiences to engage more extensively with this kind of this whole concept around what they're doing. And if you look at the de design architecture in this particular car, it has, it really puts you in a different place. It makes you think about transportation in a completely different way. And I think this is gonna be one of the things that makes it very unique, one. And number two, I think it's gonna start a little bit of a design theme change that we're gonna to start to see occur across a lot of different manufacturers. And what I mean by that is a thing called these mini moments. That's what they call it. The exterior and interior of the vehicle, they kind of all adapt to what you're trying to do for your experience inside the vehicle. So this could be everything from, you know, the lighting conditions, the seating arrangement, the stylistic design, uh, all si sides of things. And they're even talking about doing things like fragrance into this. Now we've got smell-o-vision. I mean, come on, this is going to be out of control if they can actually pull this off. And if they do, one of the companies I think that this really goes after is of course none other than Canoe, which we've talked about here on the show before. Make sure and check out the video on, on Canoe because we get into some details. They've lost a lot of executives recently. They're struggling a little bit. Don't want to talk too much about that, but the point is Canoe has potentially some big competition in the space going in this direction in terms of kind of this minivan. I'll just call it the minivan for now of where this is going. But I do like this whole approach toward these moments. These moments are something that really starts to create the personalization on vehicles. And if you think about technology today, personalization is probably one of the key things that consumers want and they like. And whether it's, I mean, just look how you do your, you know, your, your iPhone, look at how you're doing your desktop. Think about the types of things that you do in the tech space that you personalize so much. And then you apply that to different industries where personalization has pretty much become the, you know, the default or de facto model in which companies are growing. Look at the food industry. You look at the Chipotle concepts where they were going. Personalization was the whole concept behind what Chipotle was. When you move this into the automotive space, it really changes the game because in the past, what we've dealt with is pretty much you had to buy a whole design theme, whether you're buying a Shelby or a Dodge Viper or old, or you're buying a Tesla, whatever it might be, you're, you're selecting a particular category of look and feel and design and touch and elements that you're kind of stuck with. And with this particular vehicle, this is going to kind of go into some very interesting places. Wonderlust mode, they've got vibe mode, which is you know, when you think about chill, the chill moment they call, which is rear seat bench, kind of this cozy corner approach. This is gonna be great for dates. I just thought about, oh my God, my daughter is never going out in one of these. And I mean, it's just, it's creating a whole new era of what automobiles and just transportation will be. This will be interesting, I think, especially if it can get into where autonomy starts to play a big part of this. BMW, obviously, obviously not a big player in terms of autonomous uh, innovation, but in terms of design, to a certain extent, BMW and the Mini Group are a little bit more design forward. And, and I think this also fits with what they're doing in terms of the brand itself. I wanna see if this going, is going to create kind of a whole new array of tech, because if you think about this, they're doing this vibe moment, which puts um, time with other people at center stage. So basically it's opening the side door and folding up a windscreen, which creates this kind of this whole scene that blurs the boundaries between the outside and inside. So it's basically taking a vehicle and creating uh, really kind of your own camper, I guess. But it's cool to watch 
the animation of where all of this is going. If you see some of the designs that are on screen right now, you can kind of see the just the whole atmosphere that a company like uh, Mini is trying to do with this. And I think this is going to be very lifestyle oriented. So you're going to see a lot of movement in that. Um, the thing is not that big. It's like 4.5 uh, meters in length. It's got a single sliding door, much like a minivan. Uh, it does have a lot of dual functionality, which I thought was kind of cool, turning into a daybed. That was kind of very cool. I saw this des uh, the design uh, within their uh, rendering. This is going to be so cool to see this in real life. But their rendering uh, showed the vehicle uh, steering wheel retracting in, so it gives you a lot more space, and you can actually use the front seat for a lot more you know, scenarios like that. So that's going to be kind of cool. I think it's, uh, it's one of those things that we're going to see kind of this whole revolution of what the interior is going to look like in future generations of vehicles. And I think another thing that's gonna play into this is recycled and sustainability in terms of the materials that are gonna be utilized in terms of crafting everything from seats to the rubber materials to some of the, in, the environmental control systems itself. I think climate's gonna play into this in terms of you know, the technology that is playing into that. If you're driving a Tesla today, you kind of understand you know, just the uh, the ability of what climate control can do to a vehicle like that. And I think if you amp this up with some, you know, just these all these modes and this ability for this to kind of create a completely different transportation experience, this is going to get really fun very quickly. And I think this is one of those projects that you should keep an eye on today, especially if you're looking at the EV world. And of course, we're seeing all sorts of EVs hitting the marketplace. Right now, Ford's uh, heavy into it with their Mach-E and, of course, the Ford Lightning. We've seen big movements by VW really moving in this space. Obviously, Mercedes is getting ready to roll out with their lineup this year. We've got BMW trying to kind of lag in to a certain extent. This is a good position, I think, for many and their brand identity to kind of move into this next era because they already have kind of a cool, you know, vibe right now when you look at what that design is really into. And then if you compare this to the one off that is currently, I guess, kind of similar to this, and that's GM's origin. Uh, so this is gonna be something that will be very different in terms of how we move people in the future. And this also goes back to what we've talked about here on this show a lot, and that is the transition out of car ownership. And what I mean by that is as we see autonomy move into place and it will happen, we will see this, whether it's companies like Tesla or BYD or others like that. Even what we saw with much of what was released with Didi uh, with their stock IPO just this week, there's a lot of new innovation that I think a lot of people in the EV space have not been aware of. And especially when you look at what's happening with Rivian, you know, the kind of the, I won't, I won't call them the old guards, but if you look at Tesla, Rivian, Lucid, some of the key players there, then Ford and GM steps in, they get very active. This is a revolution in transportation. And I think this is one of those kinds of vehicles that could potentially be that bridge into that scenario where people do not own cars anymore. They simply Uber it up or DD it up and you've got a vehicle that you need for the weekend or for the night or for just tripping you next door to the mall, whatever it might be in terms of that. So I think that's going to change. And of course, the kind of vehicles that will really make a difference are the ones that have created a different personal experience. That's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be fun to keep track of. If you're listening in over on the podcast, make sure and stay tuned right here. We've got a lot more content constantly releasing here on TechPath in the cryptocurrency space. We cover tech from the aspect of EVs, AI, robotics, and of course, autonomy, as we see a lot of innovation happening around this space right now. If you're here on YouTube, number one thing you've got to do is subscribe. Come on. This is the place for you. If you are a tech head or if you're looking at cryptocurrency or looking at any kind of technology that is innovating, and a lot of this stuff moves in currents. It has a lot of similarities. This is the channel for you. Share it with one of your friends and make sure if you have an idea for a show, you can actually reach out to us here on our show. And that's producer at reverendnetworks.com. You can always hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. I'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.